We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, but today doesn't feel that way. We are divided in more ways than one, and the media and the powers that be all have their own agenda. The people of this great nation no longer care about the truth, they only care about the side they are on. At Poor360, I am trying to change that. For bringing you the facts and history so we can all learn something and make our own decisions. Tune in every Tuesday to be a part of that journey. The following, the following. Is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. A journey into comics. A journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey into Comics, the podcast dedicated to all things nerd, with your host, the podfather himself, Nate Phillips. Showtime, a-holes. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Journey into Comics. It's JIC 249. Ah! I can't believe we're only one episode away from 250. It scares the fuck out of me. I'm, we're like 10 seconds and I'm dropping F-bombs. I really don't give a shit. How's everybody doing on this fantastic Monday morning as you're listening to this podcast? Hopefully, or maybe it's a different day of the week and time and space when you're listening to this. So guys, it's been like super wild in my world. So many things have been going on. I feel like I've been nonstop, but in order to tell you about some of the more recent going-ons, I kind of have to take you back in time a couple weeks to the switch of our schedule. So we've got this new setup where Ollie's not with us for one week and whatnot, and uh, so while V's here, we are just trying to like focus on getting a lot of stuff done. And the girls talked about it, and, and we kind of all discussed, like, how do we make the house more flowy and give it a better energy and a better zen and and you know change it make it feel different and uh do some heavy rework and i told you guys that we were doing the thing where we were getting new couches or whatever but within getting new couches enacted this like full game plan of like okay we're gonna clean out this closet then we're gonna put this shit that's in the living room that we just got too much like all of our like video game systems that are in a tote and all of our video game system accessories that are also in a tote are going to go into this closet now this closet's going to open up and then we're going to like take the cat boxes and put them in a different closet and take the door off of that closet so that we can you know put this curtain rod up and really there's all this like humongous game plan we're going to move the popcorn maker if you've been in my house you know like there's this one specific setup in our house and we've kind of had it for a minute so to freshen it up is like a kind of terrifying thing. And like I told you guys last time we talked, I do believe, the comic room had had this kind of like slide overhaul. We don't have the crazy Vader chair that stands you up anymore. Now I've got this uh, love seat sleeper. So that's kind of nice because we have guests now. Now we can actually have guests that can go in there and shut the door. So if we have someone who's allergic to, let's say, cats, there's a bed. They don't got to stress about it. <laughs> So anyways, uh, this week we have Oliver and V has been busy with Ollie and I've been kind of just like, okay, well I've got time now to focus on getting the housework done. And Sarah's been doing her new job and she's been kind of gone from home for a couple of days. So on, I do believe it was Wednesday and Thursday or Thursday and Friday, some combination of that, <clears throat> it was Thursday and Friday for sure. I just, like, woke up, said, fuck it, I'm doing it, like, let's go, and started just, like, really without any help. And and, and this is not to discredit anybody, or I'm not trying to make anybody feel guilty or anything, but, like, just really my motor went off of, like, I just want to see this shit done. Like, if it's going to be something that has to get done, like, I don't want to fucking sit here and talk about it. I don't want to be asked a million times, like, can you do this? Can we take care of this? Like, I'm just going to fucking smash it out as fast as I can. So that when we're in our next month of July, we can actually enjoy being on quote-unquote vacation from being on the road because we're taking a month off from shows. So <clears throat> Thursday and Friday, I smash it out, you know, and it was like a lot of work. I really, I kind of worked myself stupid and, and Friday really, really extra hard because um, I dropped Sarah off at the train station. <clears throat> she went to her job. I came back. Anthony swung by, we got to hang out, catch up a little bit more, and we watched another episode of Chernobyl. Oh my god, that fucking show, like, 
If you're not watching that show, I don't know what your problem is. I know it's only five episodes long, but really also raises a lot of very interesting questions. If some of the things that are being said are true, um, then maybe some weird thing did happen and maybe America was it, you know, hand for causing Chernobyl. Who knows? I don't know. I'm I'm just, that's just strictly speculation. Hopefully there's not a red laser on my chest right now about to take me out through the window, but uh, you know, <clears throat> it's just, the show itself is very intense. It gives you a really intense feeling of dread. So Anthony, and I watched that episode and then I, I was like really in a really great headspace. My kinetic energy, you know, my mental was just right. I was feeling perfect. He and I are always getting into really good, deep conversations. So he takes off. He's got other stuff he's got to accomplish with his day. And I'm like, man, I'm going to go now. And I know it was a little bit late, but for good reason. Trust me, when I was, I want to, I'm always going to be very honest with you guys. If I don't put an episode out like by midnight, the night of it's because I didn't feel it. It wasn't in the right spot. I didn't, the energy wasn't there. Something was lacking and I want to bring my absolute best. So sometimes you just got to take a pause on an episode, refocus, get your head right and lock in. <clears throat> so do the voice survival episode. I talked about religion. I don't know if you guys listened to it. I don't know if you liked it. I don't know if you hated it. Who knows? My thing is I wanted to just give my perspectives on that journey and um, what it has done to people I care about, I guess, is the way to say that. So I did that, and then it was like, okay, boom, it's on. I'm cleaning nonstop. I'm going to get this shit done. There were, like, some really big plans that had been, oh, fuck, I didn't even tell you guys about that. <coughs> Quick drink break. I know we're a little bit early on, only about six minutes into the podcast here, but I've just been talking, like, really fast and giving you guys a lot of information, so... Let's slow it down for a second and give you a drink break brought to you right now by Poor360. You guys will be checking out Poor360 tomorrow. AP's going to be talking about his travel woes. I guess he had some rough times on his work trip and or like his way back, something or other. He's going to be talking about it, though. I'm excited to hear what he's going to have to say tomorrow. Make sure if you're already tuned into the Journey into Comics Network, you check out Poor360 every Tuesday right here. Journeyintocomics.com. Shout out to Diet Dr. Pepper. I had to get Diet Dr. Pepper because they've got Spider-Man cans, right? And I wanted to collect them all, so I had to get Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Cherry Dr. Pepper, regular Dr. Pepper, Cherry Dr. Pepper, and then Dark Berry Dr. Pepper, which that's amazing. But anyways, back to the stuff I was doing. So Thursday when I was first moving stuff, this this exasperates the whole situation. Like It makes... Everything I'm about to tell you, just a little bit worse, because I'm like really not in the best situation to be doing everything that I do. So Thursday, I'm moving this new Victrola we have. Victrola is an old like gramophone. You put a record on, you crank it. You know, it's got the big tube or whatever. But this is it's a little bit different because they're like cabinets. They have like a cabinet model that doesn't have the big tube that you typically see in an old school record player, like vintage, right? So. It's got this latch top, and the top's supposed to lock open, and it's very important. So once you open it, it clicks and locks, okay? So I have the furniture movers, and I'm, I'm trying to set this thing off the furniture movers. and Because I kind of got to do things in certain order of operation. Got to move one thing first out, then adjust one thing over, and then move another thing. It's like really super tetris how I had to move everything, because... Everything was getting a new home and everything was getting reorganized, but there wasn't space for everything all at the exact same time to do that. So it was a lot of putting shit in one room and then refiltering it out and, 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 and getting rid of some stuff and, and whatnot. So anyways, Victrola, I'm going to set it down in its first home and I'm trying to take the, the, the furniture movers off and I lift the fucking thing up and the fucking oak door slams on my fingertips and my ring finger, I'm pretty sure the tip of my ring finger is broken. I still don't really have feeling in it. It's really weak. I really, I went to like shock. I think last year, or maybe it was a year before, I can't, I feel like it was probably last year. A similar situation to this happened where the girls and I went to like 
Walmart or Target or something, and I slammed my finger in Veronica's car door, and it locked. Like the door locked, so my finger was caught in the door, and I couldn't get the my finger out of the door, and it was it was very bad. So I'm having this like flashback deja vu of you know PTSD. I guess I, I don't. That's probably unfair of me to use that jokingly, but like I it really just like it hits me, and I'm like, oh fuck. I'm all thrown off. I can't really like think straight or focus. I'm trying to <coughs> make decisions, but really having a hard time doing it. So I'm like, what in the actual fuck do I do? <clears throat> Sarah's like, look, we need to go to the grocery store. You need to get out of the house a little bit. Like, let's do that. So we did that, and then I came back and got back into work. And over the course of the next two days, I just got everything, everything done. Like, our house is a completely different place. The only room that we haven't touched, reorganized, or done anything at all with is just the bedroom. And it's kind of, that is its own process within a process within a process. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that is maybe the last project we'll we'll tackle this summer, other than possibly painting. I think we might be painting our living room and maybe getting wood floors or, or fake wood, you know, the like the, the tile, um, you know, the fucking lock paneling floors or whatever. <clears throat> so all this stuff is done and it's, you know, we're Friday. I had to go pick up Sarah in the city, get home, sleep, get up, get ready for our show on Saturday, get our stuff together, get loaded up, go down, pick V up, start our descent down to Muncie, Indiana. We're going there for the first... I've never been there ever, you know, first time ever for me. And we're going to play this place, the Guardian Brewing Company. We get there, and the place looks cool, and I'm like, yes, awesome. This place looks neat. We walk in, and I only see two tiny wedge monitors. And I'm not not trying to dog on anybody, because... Listen, seriously, if you're in the brewing business, you're not necessarily focused on knowing how to have, like, a great stage sound or whatever. So we don't really know PA-wise what we're walking into. And we walk into a little four-channel mixer, only two uh, wedge monitors for quote-unquote mains. And it was uh, it was definitely makeshift, a little touch-and-go. But you know what? We can make any situation work, and that's one thing I love about our band. We can lock in in any circumstance. There was a time where we played a show uh, during Halloween in Lafayette, and we had no monitors at all. And the only way we can hear the pianos is with monitors. It's literally the honest to God's truth. Without the monitors, we hear nothing. We played the entire show essentially quote-unquote blind because we couldn't hear anything. So it was just like drums, and then, of course, Rob was still in the band at the time, so there was bass. But we were just guessing what Sarah was doing, what V was doing, and V was singing. And it was just like, once we locked in, we stayed tight. So here we are in another situation where we've got, what are we going to do? And I'm like, let's call it back to the tree bar. This was this place we played in um, Columbus, Ohio uh, last year. We took one monitor, we pointed it out to the crowd. We took the other monitor, we flipped it around, pointed us for a stage monitor. Worked out great, mixed the sound great. Played a great show. So that same situation, Guardian Brewing, Gar- the Guardian Brewing Company, and we we killed it. I thought it was a fun show. It was really interesting because we're playing, and a wedding party comes in, like bride, groom, whole nines, all their wedding party, everybody, you know, guests and whatnot. Because they're partying after the wedding reception. This is like their after party little come down or whatever. So it's really strange because we're like doing our thing, which is very much horror punk. It's very much its own thing. Maybe you get it, maybe you don't. You know, musically speaking, though, it does have a lot of different genres that it touches on. It has some 50s groove. It has some poppy sing-along. It has some hardcore. It has some metal. Like, it, it kind of gives you know, the Misfits and, and the Danzig that we do give you a little, you know, a nice little buffet of everything. So um, it's just like I, f- I feel like you know, when we're talking about our show, you don't always expect people to be moving and dancing. Some people just stand there and watch, and they're into it, and and they'll come up to you afterwards, and you saw them just standing there, not moving, not singing along, just into it, and tell you how much they love the show. And this wedding party, man, they had people dancing from the wedding party, and uh, they had people... 
you know, bopping their heads along and stuff and just being really into it and stuff. And it was like, hey, look, these people know nothing about what we're doing. They know nothing about us. They stumbled upon this show. And they're enjoying themselves. They didn't just turn up and leave and go, oh, my God, let's get the fuck out of here. They actually stuck around, and that's cool, you know? We had fans who were talking about how crazy it is that this wedding party showed up that were, like, commenting on the page and whatnot. So the the show's over. The promoter was very nice. Bill was excellent. He sent me home with some beers for Brews with Dudes, so we're going to be gifting those to those guys. Shout out to the Guardian Brewing Company. If you're near Muncie or in Muncie, go check them out. They are definitely awesome and a cool experience to uh, to go into their brewery because you're right there in the mix of it. You can go and see their process, and it's very intimate and very real. It's really cool. So we get done with that, and then we leave. Leave, and I drive five and a half to seven blocks down a one-way the wrong way in Muncie because there's no signs that says it's a one-way, literally not a fucking sign. And I'm just like, this is really bizarre. What's going on? Why are there no stoplights on our side? That was my big question. I was like, why are there no stoplights on our side? Like, Why are we not being given the go-ahead? What is going on? And, well, lo, lo and behold, we were going down the wrong way. <laughs> so we tur- we got ourselves turned around and got ourselves out of there. And when, you know, when we were driving in, in this place called Daleville, we saw there was a Waffle House. We were like, fuck yes, when this show's over, we are hitting up the Waffle House. That's, you know, we always think about the food after the show. We want to kind of scope, hey, there's a place that we know we can definitely eat. We don't have to stress about if it's going to be open or not at the point we get there market that's what we want to do later so that's what we decided for the waffle house we go there it was fucking delicious it's like some of the best food we've ever had and we smash the food get back on the road girls immediately fall asleep because that's just how it is i drove us home dropped v off and lol because again we have ollie this week so she's gonna stay with him and and you know gotta make sure he's cool and so drop her off then we drive the rest of the way back to the house to hammond put the gear up sleep and then today's been my recovery day as i see here talking to you and i've done a lot of stuff for the band created a lot of flyers had a lot of uh conversations booked some shows and things of that nature you know it's really nonstop. but it's, it's also been very crazy to note that like as much as i love doing the band stuff i have felt it pull me away a little bit from the podcasting stuff and it makes me feel kind of like an asshole, and I feel like a bad leader, you know. But I also know that this is like kind of a well-oiled machine, what we have going here. And, uh, you know, we just want to create great content, and we just want to always put our best foot forward. And that's what the Journey into Comics Network is always about and always been about. And sometimes things happen, and, you know, the most important thing is that we're all a family. We all care about each other's well-being, and that's what comes uh, first and foremost. So it's nice because I got this month off from actually doing toury band stuff. I can actually really dive in deep, focus. We've got episode 250 coming up next week, revealing my co-host, uh, which... You know, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm actually really shocked. You probably know without question who I have the best chemistry with and who I've constantly asked to be a part of my show since not having a co-host officially since episode like 190, I think, was the new beginning, as it were. But, you know, today on this buffet of everything... uh, so yeah, no, it's crazy because today, like, I got a lot of housework done, or not a lot of housework, but a lot of uh, band stuff done and whatnot. But then, like, man, my cat's sick; she's not feeling good, and that's fucking stressful, man, because she's old. So you see it, and you're just like, ah, oh, don't be like, like if you're gonna not feel good, cat, it it just recover from it, please. Like, don't. It can't be worse. We don't want that. So positive vibes. Shout out to Cammy, you guys who've been to my house and know me. Y'all know Cammy. She's an adorable pet. Send out your positive vibes to her because she needs it. That's a fact. So we have chatted long enough, I think, about the personal stuff. It's a little bit shorter this week in that regard. We've got some other stuff that we've got to really cover. And, uh, you know, uh, I think we're going to get right down to that. In just one short second, we're going to have one more quick drink break. You guys know who it's brought to you by. It's poor, poor 360, of course. Anyways, as I was saying, there's this dark, pardon me, there's this dark berry Dr. Pepper 
and man, it's fucking tasty. It's so good. It really is. It's like next level. It's like if you took a pitch black Mountain Dew and morphed it into Dr. Pepper, that's what that beverage tastes like. It's really good. It's terrible for you. You probably shouldn't drink it. It will definitely rot your insides. I know because it's making me feel like my insides are rotten. All this Dr. Pepper I've been drinking the past few weeks. But again, Spider-Man, far from home. Marketing is great. They've got these different cans with each different Spider-Man suit on four of the five different berry of the different pops. But on the dark berry, it's motherfucking Mysterio. It's fish head. Or fishbowl head, my bad. Not fish head, fishbowl head. So, like, I'm really super excited for that movie. It's crazy how it's going to time out, too, because episode 250 is going to drop the day before that movie comes out, and it's going to be, like, 250's kind of speculation and final predictions, what we think is going to be a part of Far From Home. <clears throat> and then, after we do the prediction thing, the very following week, we're going to actually get to talk about it, say what we thought, say how we think the movie went, you know, have a breakdown of it. Who knows, maybe Tyler or whoever is, uh, you know, around or, or Dick or really anybody. It would be so, it's it's during the 4th of July weekend, so it's like maybe we could get some people together to talk about it that would be so much fun. Like I would be, pow, AP, anybody, I, I'm just riffing here, just throwing it out there. Um I, I'm uh, listen. Spider Man Far From Home. Spider Man in general is one of my favorite characters. Spider Man Far From Home looks to be one of the coolest movies. They're saying it's next level. Um, I've been hearing a lot of different potential spoilers, which any, if any of them hold true, you guys, we have got a very bright future coming, and I cannot wait to see uh, what the future of the MCU holds. <clears throat> but speaking of the future of the MCU. Let's talk about some fantasy casting. Now, one person who a lot of people are like, man, love to get him in the MCU because he's such a fantastic person. He's a great actor. He's got a good face, humongously ripped. He's built like a superhero. Why shouldn't he be one? Dwayne The Rock Johnson, right? So the Endgame director, one of the Russo bros, said that The Rock should play the rock in the MCU. And I'm like, that's a boring, lame-ass cop-out. Like, come on, really? That's the best you can do is the rock should play the rock? Really? Like, come on. That sounds like a cop-out because it's like, they know who he's probably going to be playing. They probably have a great idea of who he is going to be cast as. Um, but they don't want to say because if they give too much away... Obviously, that's tipping their cards, and they don't want to do that yet. They're very, they're holding their cards very closely, and we're going to talk about it. So, who should The Rock play? That's a great question. The Rock himself actually agreed with them. He's like, of course, it was the role I was born to play. Sign me up, Russos. We'll talk immediately. MCU, it's time to rule the MCU forever. You know, and I think about it, and it's like, who really, though? Like, who could Dwayne The Rock Johnson portray that hasn't yet been brought to the screen and it's like, okay, first thought, Quasar. I think that's an amazing idea. Uh, Quasar's super powerful. He's super buff. Uh, even though you would have to change his... I, well, I guess you didn't. You wouldn't want to necessarily do the other. my other, other gut reaction. But Quasar definitely is up there in my head of like, he would fucking slay in that position. Like, he would be great. Um, another character another character that i think the rock could play would be somebody who's voiced over who's not necessarily because listen you can get the rocks acting chops all day you can get him as a superhero with the body and the build but very much like vin diesel you also can utilize him in a different role that's really fucking cool and original maybe the rock would be the voice of fing fang foom perhaps um or maybe somebody in the future you know it'd be awesome if uh if The Rock had something to do with uh, the Spider-Verse in the future. I don't know who you would have him cast as, but, I mean, you kind of, like, go over it. He, he could make a pretty decent Sandman. I know he's not necessarily as pasty as typically Sandman is, but it doesn't matter. That would be interesting. Uh, 
The Rock being a good guy, though, I think would be more fun in the MCU, honestly. When you think about it, like, you know, if he's going to be Black Adam, he's most likely now a villain in the DCEU, if that's still going to be a thing. So on the flip side of that, you're like, what do you want to do with him in the MCU? And I would say, again, Hero's the way to go. My gut says Quasar, though. I don't think I have many other thoughts other than that. Like, it's it's really, you just look at the build of that character. You look at the build of The Rock. They're buried dead on. You know, the acting ability of The Rock would be so complex he could take and really make that character very deep and interesting and really drive the uh, the emotional notes of that character's backstory home. I think, all in all... That that's just that's my choice and opinion. I know that that would mean then that he would be in the same movie as Chris Hemsworth and uh, Chris Pratt and Dave Bautista and you know technically speaking Vin Diesel and technically speaking Bradley Cooper and Karen Gillian. I mean, which ooh, he, he co-starred with in uh, Jumanji and in the second Jumanji too, also as well. So uh, you know, thinking about The Rock, I think he's going to eventually get there. He's one of the the names that I'm very, very certain we are going to see show up in the MCU in the very near future. And I tell you, another person who I feel is very much destined is Keanu Reeves. And so much so, you know, he has said like, hey guys, I need you to bring me in. Like, I would love that. But also, you know, uh, they've actually said, they've actually had conversations with Keanu Reeves about coming in. So that's awesome. And they just want to make sure to bring him in in the right way. And I, you know, honestly, Keanu Reeves would make a dope uh, Mr. Fantastic. If, If it's not John Krasinski, maybe Keanu Reeves. Just saying, just throwing that out there. You know, and one thing we want to talk about with Kevin Feige and Keanu Reeves is, uh, you know, comicbook.com is reporting on this, and they said a couple of actors that I want to ask you about talking to Kevin Feige. Keanu Reeves, do you guys talk to him for anything? And and Kevin Feige says, we talk to him for almost every film we make. We talk to Keanu about, I don't know when, if, or ever he'll join the MCU, but very much want to figure out the right way to do it. Uh, He went on to talk about how Jake Gyllenhaal had been contacted multiple times, but then until he fell on the perfect role in Mysterio, um, and they're hoping a similar situation occurs with Reeves, uh, pointing that he would join the wide world of Marvel when the right role presents itself. Obviously, he's been doing a great job with the John Wick series. He's going to be Duke Kablam in uh, Toy Story 4, which just opened this past weekend. It did like 118 mil at the domestic box office. did really great. Uh, you know, Disney rules the world. Just saying. If you look at it, it's real. Disney is ruling this world, man. It's true. So, I don't, you know, I don't know. I think um, there are a lot of different places you could go with Keanu as well and he could make you could make him Kang the Conqueror and that'd be fucking incredible. He'd be an amazing Kang the Conqueror. And then to do different variations on him, ugh, great. Sold. I know it's not your typical role, but that's just me riffing on it. I mean, you want to talk about the possibility of actors being in the MCU and honestly, I feel like you don't want to fan cast. You, we, I think we as fans should more say, these are the actors you guys need to bring into the MCU, but we're going to trust you to position them where they're going to be the most successful. I mean, you look at their cast list, and it's just like every single time, boom, it's a home run. Boom, it's a it's a knockout of the ballpark. Vulture being, you know, um, being uh, Michael Keaton was amazing. And shout out to Michael Keaton as we're sitting here Yesterday was the 30th anniversary of 1989 Batman being released in theaters. 30 years, you guys. One of my all-time favorite movies is 30 years old. I was two years old and change when that movie first came out. And I've watched it so much in my life. I mean, I'm probably going to put it on as a bedtime show uh, when I put this thing off into the internet lands and put myself to sleep. Uh, Because it's just one of those movies that is a warm, fuzzy blanket for me. And I love, absolutely love watching it. Uh, Michael Keaton is amazing. 
Um, Michelle Pfeiffer in the second movie was amazing. You look at their cast throughout history, and and, and I want to say something. So you look at their cast, right? And then you look how they get some of those cast members have been brought into the MCU. Michael Keaton as Vulture, Michelle Pfeiffer as Janet Van Dyne. Uh, I feel like there's a couple other people that have been brought in 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 that uh, universe, but my brain is a little bit just not all 100%, because that really wasn't my plan. I wasn't really planning on talking about 89 Batman too much or that that Tim Burton uh, franchise. Uh, But, you know, anyways, uh, I'm excited for whatever the future of the MCU is, you know. And actually, here's the crazy thing. We might know sooner rather than later, and this is something that we're going to have to blow the doors open on because... Avengers Endgame is getting a re-release, a theatrical re-release. It's still in theaters. How do you mean it's getting a theatrical re-release? Nate, that movie, that doesn't make sense. It's already out. You can't release something that's already out. You can't put Pandora back in the box. You know? Well, let me tell you. Kevin Feige let the beans spill saying they're releasing the movie with some after credits bonus stuff. It's going to have some surprises. It's going to feature some cameos. It's going to have a tribute to Stan Lee, most likely. And it's an additional six and a half minutes of footage that will not be taking place during the film. Don't go there expecting to see it during the movie. You're going to have to stay until the end credits, folks. Maybe buy your ticket, show up two hours late, watch the third act, and enjoy the end of the movie. Of course, you'd get there and people would be like, oh my God, you fucking idiot there. They have a bunch of cool stuff that they added in here that they didn't even tell us. It's been scattered throughout the whole movie. It's great. I doubt that happens, but you never know. I mean, who knows? Uh, but they did say that it's an additional six and a half minutes being added to the movie. Interesting timing that they're announcing this, by the way, because here we are, 30 some million dollars is all that separates uh, Avengers Endgame from beating Avatar at the box office all time. $38 million from o- from unseating the 2009 reigning Avatar James Cameron film. Uh, but it looks like Endgame is going to do this, you guys, because look, twofold. You've got... This is a push right before... Spider-Man Far From Home. It's going to give people a push into, oh my God, we have to go see that movie immediately. When is it out next week? Oh, fuck, yeah, that's great. Let's push it. And it's going to be a big marketing push for them, okay? So that's huge, okay? So then you look at them adding the bonus footage and what it's going to do for them to beat Avatar. And it's a big push there. So it's like you look at all these things and, and really Disney's positioned themselves in such a way where now they're going to have the highest grossing movie of all time. And it's going to be a fucking Avengers movie, you guys. The, a movie that some people said, oh, it's not probably going to happen. And here's the deal. With this new extended footage coming out and these the bonus features and stuff that they're talking about, you got to understand, folks, it is very likely this thing pushes itself back up into the into the th- talkings for being a $3 billion movie, which still hasn't been done. <clears throat> but, I mean, you think about it, and it's 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 highly possible that that could happen because people would be like, oh, my God, that six minutes was amazing. If you haven't seen it, you're stupid. Go into the theater right now. And people are just like, oh, my God, I have to go. And they, they freak out, and they panic, and they rush. And they're like, holy shit, I stayed the three hours. I watched the whole movie. It was amazing to see again in theaters and to witness one more time. Witness, you know, that maybe this time when I go see it, I'll go see it in 3D IMAX and really get the full, 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 full experience. You know what I'm saying? So then I'll have experience in every way, a 2D, a a 2D, an IMAX, and then a 3D IMAX. And then I can say I've watched Avengers every way, including a bootleg. It's great. Just being honest. That's how it is. So, we, uh, you know, we look at the, the, the way that Avengers Endgame is positioning itself and the future of the MCU, and, you know, they keep saying that they've got stuff they're going to be announcing soon. They've also said that this new footage is going to be introduced 
Maybe this new footage also lets us know what the future of the MCU is with a big reveal of all their movie uh, names that are coming and all the things they plan for the next several five years at least, because that's usually how they plan it. And, and, and go, look, guys, here you go. This is the next five years. This is what you can have to look forward to. Three movies a year for the next five years means 15 movies. That's, whoa. <laughs> Way more than the first five years of the MCU. I can tell you that. So I really look forward to seeing what Marvel has in store. I really cannot wait for what they are going to do because they're definitely going to take down Avatar. And I tell you, you know what's awesome? This is something that we have talked about before. We discussed is the possibility. Did that happen? Is it real? Did did it really, you know, blah, 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 blah. Tom Holland, who was a star in Avengers Endgame, also in Spider-Man Far From Home. We're talking about that. Um most recently in a interview talked about how someone who was not Tom Holland played Peter Parker in the MCU. It's true. It's damn true. You can't take it back. You can't change it. And here's the deal. So in Iron Man 2, uh, Tom Holland says this, well, Spider-Man is actually in a previous Marvel movie, my version of Spider-Man. Do you know where it is? My Peter Parker is in Iron Man 2, but at the end where all the robots are tagging the people and the little kid's wearing an Iron Man mask and the bad robot recognizes the Iron Man mask as a threat and the kid puts his hand up and then Tony lands next to him and blows the, you know, uh, robot away and goes, good job, kid, and flies away. That's the theory. No, it was actually me. It was me. Kevin Feige confirmed it. So through a conversation with Kevin Feige, Kevin Feige confirmed to Tom Holland that that kid is Absolutely Peter Parker, which means that that's most likely the catalyst moment that fuels him to want to be a hero, driving home even further the heartbreak of the end of Endgame. And, uh, man, <clears throat> that's brutal. Totally brutal. Let's talk about this Far From Home because there's a weird thing coming. I know what they're probably going to do. Obviously, there was something that got released that the cast is talking about making jokes about. The internet's going to pick up on it, blow up. Oh my God, this is what they're trying to say it is and, and make it this like thing. And they're supposed to drive home the clickbait ads of the, of the, they're ruining Spider-Man, you know, uh, because they allegedly the spider sense is not going to be called spider sense. It's going to be called Peter Tingle. <laughs> and that's awful. I, I don't know how to say it other than it's awful. It sounds so bad. I don't know why. But it's an Aunt May thing. Aunt May names Peter's Peter Tingle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, she names it. And and they show the little clip that that's where it gets its name. But you got to believe he calls it the Spidey Sense. Or, or you know, maybe Ned names it or something. And this is just, a, again, a red herring to be funny. They're poking fun at themselves. And you know Aunt May, of course, would name it something dorky. But. She essentially throws a banana at Peter. He doesn't catch it. She's like, you dodge bullets, but you can't catch a banana? What happened to your um your Peter Tingle? And he's like, May, stop saying Tingle. <laughs> like, please. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this movie, you guys. I'm just going to say it again and again and again and again until the cows come home and drive it home. You need to go see Spider-Man Far From Home. They didn't pay me to say that. I wish they did. I really fucking hire me somehow, Marvel. I doubt you're listening, but maybe. Who knows? Uh, more Spider-Man far from homebedness as it has been confirmed there are not one, but two post-credit scenes in uh, for, you know, uh, Spider-Man far from home. And let me tell you what, folks. So I was scrolling on Twitter or on uh, Reddit the other day, and I saw this rumor that was what the end credits are. Man... Man, oh man, oh man. Ah, I don't want to spoil it, you guys. Because if it's real, the one, if it's real, is real good. Like, oh, oh my fuck. Like, genius level good, right? Don't see it coming. I don't want to spoil you. The second one was like, okay. Like, okay, cool. Like, sure. Okay. I'm into that. But... Uh, all in all, we know there are two, so be ready for them. Don't leave the theater early. I know we, again, are a little bit over a week out here before Spider-Man Far From Home drops in theaters July 2nd, which is a Tuesday. You're like, what? It's dropping on July 2nd. Yeah, 
It is a Tuesday. That is real. That's not a, a miscommunication or a mishap. You're not misreading into that. Reason being, Thursday is the 4th of July. They don't want to do a premiere on the 4th of July because it will pull their numbers way down because people are going to be going and celebrating the 4th of July. So they're going to just wrap the holiday weekend extra big. It's kind of a thing a lot of movies typically do when they're around the 4th of July. They find a way to incorporate it if they can. So now they're going to have this weekend where it's like literally from July 2nd through to the next Monday is their first opening weekend, and it's going to be huge. I mean, people are going to be celebrating on the 4th of July, and it's awesome. I love that Spidey is uh, you know, a symbol of hope and, and, and positive energy in a crazy world that we live in. And have him, like, on the 4th of July, the celebration of freedom is, uh, you know, it's it's cool and kind of liberating, and I can't wait to see this movie. I've said it a bunch, I know. You know a movie I can't wait to make fun of and do a riff tracks or something on is uh, X-Men Dark Phoenix, which I probably can't even see in theaters now, folks. And that's a real true story. It's only been out two and a half weeks, but... X-Men Dark Phoenix has lost a massive, a massive amount of theaters after the box office failure that it had. It's going to lose 1,667 theaters. That's 44% of the theaters that are showing it in its third week, which is an insane number. But that's not the only insane number that Dark Phoenix is pulling in. Uh, the opening with... 33 million. The film dropped a massive 72.6% in its second weekend, earning just nine million dollars. Meaning that in its first three weeks, the box office total is now 52 million dollars. At this rate, its fin final box office gross may not top some other X Men movies opening weekends. Its final box office won't top opening weekends for some of these movies. And Simon Kinberg also said that he is willing to take the blame for the film's failure. It clearly is a movie that didn't connect with the audience that didn't see it. It didn't connect with the audience that did see it. So that's on me. I love making the movie, and I love the people that I made the movie with. But, man, 20 years down the tubes for a shitty movie, it's like, what do you even do? And the Marvel studio head, I uh, do believe Kevin Feige, has explained what they intend on doing. Um... He says, it's still the early days, but it's been a fun exercise. It's one, by the way, we've been doing for years. Every development meeting starts with the cool idea and fun ideas, and our wheels are always turning in terms of what if. To use a Marvel publishing term, what if we did this? What if we did that? What if we had access to such and such characters? That's how Spider-Man uh, Homecoming came together in the first place. It's fun to now be in this position with Fox characters, too, because if we come up with a great what if, we can actually do it. Uh, much like fans have come to accept the X-Men and Fantastic Four might never make it in the MCU, viewers never anticipated Spider-Man joining the franchise due to Sony's possessing the rights to the character. He made a small role debut in Captain America Civil War with Feige, noting the Fox characters could transition into the MCU in a similar way. He says, you know, oftentimes it comes down to a specific character and a specific story and a specific way to introduce them. So sometimes, like with Spider-Man and Black Panther, that made sense. And then other times with characters like Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Thor, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, it's fun introducing them in their own movie first. So it just depends on the story we're trying to tell. He didn't offer any hints as to when we could expect into these characters. He didn't expect his, his relief in having access to the incredible roster of new characters. It's great to finally have what most companies that hold a lot of intellectual property have, and that's access to all those characters. We were one of the few companies that had a lot of characters but didn't have access to a whole bunch of them, and now that we do, it's wonderful. They're back in the sandbox, in the toy chest, and now as ideas come up and as op opportunities come up, we can utilize them, which feels really nice. Man, Kevin Feige, stand-up dude. So it's like, what's the future of the MCU? What else do we have moving forward? We've talked about it. Black Widow is a movie that's coming out. It's most likely a, some sort of, not a full-blown prequel, but a prequel into the Civil War time of the MCU. Um, but we might actually have a spoiler on a reveal of someone who's showing up in this movie as having a first appearance for this character. That is a historical legacy character alongside the Black Widow, also someone who carries the mantle of Black Widow at some point. Uh, Scarlett Johansson was working alongside her co-star Florence Pugh, uh, and it's possible that Florence Pugh might become the next Black Widow, meaning that this is possible this lady's going to be picking up the mantle, say, in the near future after this movie. Um, but there are apparently some dummies that they're going to be using for some action stunt scenes. One name is 
one of the boxes carrying the stunt dummies is labeled Natasha, while Pews, the lady that's working alongside of her, uh, is labeled Yelena. So for those of you who aren't sure who Yelena is, uh, she is also a secret agent, former member of the KGB, and the second hero to take on the mantle of Black Widow. She serves as part of the Avengers for a time before Natasha returned to fight crime in the MCU. Oh. Uh, Yelena has continued to play a role, sometimes as a villain, but always has remained an equal to Natasha. So it's possible we're getting Yelena's debut, and possible that we are going to get her in the future of the MCU as a new form of Black Widow. A different vision of Black Widow, a different version of the Black Widow. I love that. And you know, maybe that'd be one thing, like the Avengers are like, shit, we can't. We can't let the world know that we had so many losses. We can't let the world know Captain America's no more. We can't let the world know Tony Stark's dead. I mean, they obviously do let the world know Tony Stark's dead, and that's going to be like the shockwave that, that changes the world, but no one's going to be talking about Black Widow's death. So how do you undercut that? Just put someone else in her place, fill the shoes, and and do it intelligently. I mean, that's, that's one way they could, quote-unquote, recast into the future of this character and... Who knows? Who knows? We we don't know officially. They did officially or unofficially. Uh, somebody snagged a picture of the back of the chair, um, Black Widow's logo, and you know it's it's an alright basic logo in like a silverish font with the hourglass in between the words Black and Widow. Marvel Studios above that. Um, pretty cool. I'm uh I'm excited to see what they do with that uh, movie. <clears throat> It's going to be one of those things where it's going to be kind of timey-wimey. It's weird to look back. You're thinking about Scarlett Johansson. Her character is no more. There's going to be some weird foreshadowing they can put in after the fact to to really beautifully tie up that character. You know, because at some point, again, the one thing I love about this MCU is you don't have to tell everything chronologically right now. You can do nonlinear storytelling and jump into different parts of the past and the future of your timeline. Because then you can have people who are fans like me say, look, this is the viewing order. Watch it in this order so you can see everything play out in the timeline exactly how it played out. So you really get a sense and you're not jumping back and forth and back and forth and back and forth in the time stream of, of things. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking for every, like, like I keep saying, I'm a fanboy of Marvel, I guess. It's just the truth. I got my Peter Tingle for Marvel. So anyways, let's talk about some DC stuff, you guys. As someone has died who is a major part of DC, you're like, what died? Why didn't you hear about this? I didn't read about this. Well, maybe not died, but retired. They are retiring the Vertigo banner. Vertigo will no longer be an offshoot comic part of DC. They are just going to be a DC Comics. If they've got R-rated material or M-rated material, they're going to put warnings up and let people know that it's like Black Label Edition or whatever. But they are no longer going to be using Vertigo Comics. So that's kind of a um, a really sad ending of a really nice part of uh, DC. I mean, Watchmen, V for Vendetta, all kinds of different titles came out through Vertigo. And uh, it's it's it, pass it down. It's done. It's time to time to retire. Hang up the bootstraps. You know it's it's over. And uh, man, it's cra It's that's just crazy to think. Like I can't even believe it. When I saw the headline, I was like, "Is that fucking for real? Like really? Vertigo's retired? Like they're what? Really? Oh man, that's dumb. But that's just that's just how it is, folks." I got one more last little thing, and then we're going to do a little jump back in time here. But uh, if you watched season one of Titans, you know that at the end they teased the creation of Superboy. Okay? So they teased the creation of Superboy. And it's like, oh man, what are they going to do in season two of Superboy? But they just officially showed off the first look at Joshua Orphan's uh, Orpin, 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 Orpine. Uh, his first picture of him as Superboy, and man, he looks it. He looks like Superboy. They nailed it. 
I'm really excited. Titans was awesome. If you guys haven't seen Titans, do. Please go watch Titans. It was great. Uh, but yeah, man. I don't think I have anything else today, folks. Uh, uh, before we get out of here, let's go ahead and do the plugs. As always, I want to say you guys can check out the Journey into Comics podcast on the Journey into Comics network at journeyintocomics.com. Get us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, Spotify, CastBox, TuneIn, and many others. Just go to Journey into Comics. Dot com where you can you know figure out all the different ways to get us there as well. Uh, you can also go to patreon.com backslash journey into comics and give us a buck for early access and or exclusive content where you can get a bunch of cool stuff from our network. We also have got sticker deals and a whole bunch of other stuff. Just make sure to check out journey into comics at patreon.com backslash journey into comics. And I want to say thank you guys so much for listening to episode 249. Peter Tingle. Of Journey Into Comics, I have been your host, Nate. As always, pop your caps back and fill your brains with shit. Later, y'all.